All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glorification to Yahweh, Ba'ashim HaMashiach, Wamalak Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His beloved Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, whom is the Savior of the nation of Israel. It's Brother Malachi out of the WFI Detroit camp. And today's lesson is entitled, Let No Man Take Thy Crown. So let's start off with the book of Revelations, chapter 3. In verse 10, <clears throat> because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Now, what is the hour of temptation? That's when all hell is breaking loose on earth. That's Jacob's trouble. That's when martial law kicks off. That's when there's famines out here. That's when there's pestilence on the earth at a massive scale, right? The Lord is going to keep us from the hour of temptation because we keep in the law, statutes, and commandments. He's going to protect his servants with us wherever we go. Let's get Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 5. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 5. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man heart discern of both time and judgment. So that's plain upon tables. When you're keeping the commandments, the Most High protects you. He's going to send them all still angels around you, right, fought, uh, uh, leading you with the soever you go, that your foot uh, uh, stumble not and that your body see not corruption right so let's go back to verse 10 which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon earth upon the earth right so some trying times are coming to babylon the great man right a time like never before on the earth a time in which people are going to be dying at a massive scale right a time in which you're not going to be able to call upon your false idols man the scriptures speak about how men are going to throw their idols to the moles and to the bats, right? The only strength you're going to have in that day is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. If you're an Israelite and you kept these commandments, you have to endure to the end as it states in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 10, right? You got to gird up the loins of your mind as it states in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13, because the times that's coming on the earth, it's going to be like a time never before on the earth. There's going to be so much death, so much destruction. And you have to be spiritually prepared for that. Let's get Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6. It say, In wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. So the wisdom and the knowledge is going to be the stability that's going to keep you stable in these times to come. Knowing the prophecies, having the understanding of the scriptures, knowing what happens to you after you die, man. A lot of people, they're going to be bugging the hell out. A lot of men going to be giving up the faith. When they facing those guillotines, right? But you got to understand, if you get put to death in the flesh, yet in your spirit, you're going to see the most high again, man, right? That's what the scriptures say. You got to have faith in the Lord. You got to have faith that the most high is going to raise you back up in that day, right? On resurrection day. And you're going to be in those chariots, giving all honor and glory to your Hashem Yahweh Shah. You have to know and you have to believe that within your spirit, right? And they say, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. So when you fear the Lord, that's the treasure, man. Not riches and wealth of this society, not physical money, not Federal Reserve notes. That's not your treasure. You got to lay up your treasure in heaven, right? The scriptures say riches profit not in the day of wrath, right? So all this money that these Floyd Mayweather's got, these LeBron Jameses, these Jay-Z's, Beyonce's, that money is not going to be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord. Let's get Proverbs chapter 11, verse 4 on that. This wisdom and this knowledge... Right is, is, is the treasure of the Most High. Let's get Proverbs chapter 11, verse 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. So that rich is not going to profit. That's playing upon table. What delivers you? Righteousness. What's righteousness? Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Father. Not coveting. Okay? Not eating abominable flesh. Right? Not profaning the Sabbath day. Keeping the holy days of Yahweh. Right, doing what's pleasing in the sight of the Lord, not being a talebearer, not being a gossiper, not lying one to another, right? But walking righteous before your power, man. Knowing what is acceptable in the sight of the Lord, right? Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. So it's your righteousness when you keep these laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Shah. That's what keeps you righteous on the earth. This is what's going to deliver you. 
okay? Not you knowing all the precepts, okay? Not you uh, having abundance of wealth. That's not going to deliver you. What's going to deliver you is you keeping these laws, doctrines, and commandments. You being sincere within your spirit, right? You having that wisdom and knowledge that's going to keep you stable in the times to come on the earth, right? So let's go back to Revelation chapter 3. Let's go to verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So what do you have to hold fast to? This wisdom and this knowledge, man. Let's get Matthew the 25th chapter. You got a lot of brothers and sisters out here not holding fast, man. Letting that crown slip. Yeah, we may have uh, slip-ups and falls sometimes as mortal men, but we have to pick ourselves back up and go ten times harder. The scriptures speak about how a righteous man falleth seven times in the book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 16 and Psalms chapter 37 and verse 24, right? Though he fall, yet he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his right hand, right? So we uphill with the right hand of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, right? The scriptures say, uh, Paul said through the spirit of the Lord, hey amen, through, through this we are more than conquerors, man, through Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. Though we go through hell, uh, tribulation, persecution, famine uh, though we go through all these hardships we are more than conquerors through Yahweh Shah who loved us as it states in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 we can do all things through Hamashiach Yahweh Shah who strengthened us right so as long as we had the Lord and as long as we had these commandments and as long as we had these precepts we're going to be all right man we got to have faith in the most high that he's going to bring us out of our trials and tribulations let's go to Matthew chapter 25 and verse 1 then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now the bridegroom is the Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Let's get John chapter 3 and verse 29 on that. Right? Book of John chapter 3 and verse 29. And it reads, He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. And the Israelites, we are the bride because we married unto the Lord. And the bridegroom is Hamashiach. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. So again, Yahweh Shah, he's the bridegroom, and Israel is the bride. Alright, so now, let's go to verse 2. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Right, so you gotta seek to be that wise version in these last days. Right, now what's a version? Let's get James chapter 1 and verse 27. Right? Let's get James chapter 1 and verse 27. What do it mean to be a virgin? Right? Because you got a lot of people that read the scriptures and they see you look, you in sin because you ain't a virgin. You you ain't a virgin, so you in sin. Yeah, you're going to make it to heaven. What are you talking about, man? Right? This is a spiritual version. Right? A man who have not known woman. Right? You got a lot of different women out here. You got false doctrines, false philosophies. Right, you got uh, 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 the love of money. Okay, you got you got damn uh, greed. You got pride. Right, you got different doctrines out here that the white man set up. These are different women, but the elect they're not going to be tainted with the doctrines of this world. Let's get James chapter one and verse twenty-seven, and that's what makes them versions. James chapter one and verse twenty-seven: Pure religion and undefiled before Yahweh and the Father is this: to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. So you have to keep yourself unspotted from this world, man. Right? This world has many spots and blemishes upon it. And it's trying to stain your garment. You got to keep your garment as it states in Revelation chapter 16 verse 15. Your garment represents your knowledge. Do not let your knowledge be tainted with the ways of this world. Don't go into a pride. Don't go into whoremongering. Don't go into covetousness. Don't go into homosexuality. These are all the different doctrines of this world that's trying to taint your spirit so you can be a defiled uh, uh, a virgin, man. So you can be defiled. No, man, we got to seek to be clean in these last days. Seek to be blameless. Seek to be without spot and without blemish. Just as Hamashiach Yahweh Shah was. We got to follow the land with us so wherever he goeth. Did Paul say, follow me for he's a follower of Hamashiach, roughly paraphrasing in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11? All right. So let's um let's go back to Matthew chapter 25 and verse 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Right? So the oil represents the knowledge, the wisdom. Let's get a precept on that. <clears throat> Psalms 
Psalms chapter 104 and verse 15. And wine that make of lead the heart of man, and oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens the man's heart. So the scriptures speak about oil making a man's face to shine. But let's get another link in precept to validate what that oil is. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 1. Who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. So a man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. So that oil represents the wisdom. All right, so you have to have the wisdom in these last days, Israel. Now, what's the wisdom? The fear of the Lord. That's the treasure of the Most High. Let's get Job chapter 28, verse 28. This is the book of Job chapter 28, verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. All right, so you have to have the fear of the Lord in these last days. You must have it. It's vital for your salvation. It's vital for your spirit, man. If you don't fear the Lord, you're going to do what's convenient to you. You're going to do your heart's pleasure. You're going to do without whatever comes out of your spirit, man. Whether it's lust, whether it's adultery, whether it's homosexuality, whether it's eating clean, unclean foods, right? Whether it's uh, dealing in different doctrines, right? You're going to do what's in your own spirit and what's in your own flesh. But when you fear the Lord, you do what's pleasing to the Most High. You do what He commanded you to do, all right? So that's Matthew chapter 25 and verse 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Right? And we making that cry in the midnight. Right? We going out there on highways and byways in the midst of a dark land, telling Israel, Wake the hell up, because Yahweh Shah is coming back to redeem Israel. And if you're not right, you're going to be destroyed right along with the so-called white man and the def different heathen nations. That's what we tell Israel. So we make that cry in the night. Right? It say, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give Salakia, verse 7. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. So you have to trim your lamps in these last days. Right? Examine yourself, making sure you're doing what you're supposed to do to keep yourself in the spirit of the Lord and to keep yourself on that straight and narrow path. Right, because there's many different devices out here that you can fall there with, man. Right, you got water on this side, you got fire on this side, you got doctrines over here, doctrines over there, wicked people over here, wicked people over there, seducing spirits, doctrines of devil. You got all kind of hell around you, but you have to stay on that straight and narrow path, as it states in the Bible. What's that straight and narrow path? This Bible, doing what these scriptures say, humbling down to the word of the Lord. Right. So you got to arise and trim your lamps, making sure you on fire in this thing, making sure you pray, making sure you fasting, making sure you studying, making sure you hitting up brothers, making sure you, uh, uh, uh you know, that, that prayer is important, man. You got to pray to the Lord, man. Right. Right. I'm speaking to myself, man. Right. Hey, that slothful demon, man, that slothful demon can hop on you at any time. You got to kind of knock that thing to the side, man. And say, look, no, I'm going to study. I'm going to get the scriptures. I'm going to read a certain amount of uh, uh, chapters a day. I'm going to study my precepts. Right? Even if you're feeling slothful, you're feeling down, you kind of don't want to study, you got to make yourself do it, man. Right? You got to be disciplined in this thing. Right? That's what the Lord uh, sees in a man. Right? That's a great possession that a man ought to have is discipline. Right? So let's keep reading. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Let's get Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Right? So you can't let no man take your crown, man. Right? Whether it's a family member, okay, whether it's a wife, whether it's a, a, another brother trying to put a doctrine in your ear, you can't let no man take your crown. You got to stay on that straight and narrow path. Right? Let's get Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Right? So you got to keep your lights burning. Stay on fire for the Lord. Let's get 2nd Edges chapter 6, verse 37.
Let's look at 2 Edges, chapter 6 and verse 37. It say, For my spirit was greatly set on fire, and my soul was in distress. So even Edges was on fire for the Lord. Even he had the spirit upon him to do the work, man. You have to have that same labor and spirit in these last days. You got to go to the ant, man. As it states in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. You see them ants out there in the summertime. They got the damn popcorn on their back, right? They kind of carrying that Dorito chip, right? And they strong as hell, man. And they marching in position. And they sweating. And they going what they got to do to make it happen, man. And you have to be the same way in these last days, right? Might be catching all kind of hell, man. Your job giving you hell, right? You trying to get your household in order. You still got the ministry to worry about. You still got to hit up brothers and exhort brothers to keep their spirit strong. You still got to work out your own salvation. You got a lot of different elements in this thing, man. Right? But the only way you can be able to manage these things is through the scriptures and doing what the Bible say. Because you can't do it out of your own heart, out of your own flesh. Right? We'll all be destroyed if we try to do things our way, man. Because we as filthy rags until your Habash me, I was shot. We ain't clean, so we need these scriptures to uh, guide us in our paths, right? Uh, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. So you got a lot of brothers and sisters out here in which their lamps are gone out. They falling back into the world. They losing that wit. They losing that knowledge. They don't know the breakdowns no more. They done went back into the world. They picked up a blunt. Right, they went into whoremongering, they went into covetousness, right, and all kind of different spirits, man. Right? Let's get wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 4 on that. Right? And you got to make sure that's not you in these last days. Right? And if you feel yourself slipping, hey man, tighten up. You have to tighten up. You have to get back in the spirit. You have to pray. You have to fast. You have to study, man. Reach out to brothers. Talk to the Heavenly Father, man. Pray all throughout your day. Get yourself back on track, man. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4, verse 4. For though they flourish in branches for a time, yet standing not fast, they shall be shaken with the wind. And through the force of winds, they shall be rooted out. So you got men who flourish in branches for a time. They waking up Israel. They doing breakdowns. They going into the Hebrew. They going into the history. But they didn't stand fast. They didn't have a sure foundation. So when that wind came, which represents the destruction, when doctrines came, when persecution came, these men fell out the truth and they left the ministry and they forsook the Lord. Right? Just like those trees, man. Right? What, what, uh, what they say in Matthew, the 21st chapter, how soon is the fig tree withered away? Got a lot of brothers withering away in these last days, man. They just leaving the Lord. They say, look, I had enough of it. I'm throwing in the towel. I tap out. I want to go back into the world, pick up this blunt and just live my life, man. Right? But not knowing that these men are going to be suddenly destroyed and that without remedy. Right? So you don't want that lot in these last days. So you got to continue in this thing. Once you come into the truth, you done made a blood covenant and signed your life over to your how about me, I was shot. Now, if you forsake that covenant and break that covenant, A is death. Straight up, man. That goes back to, I believe that's, um, what's that? Exodus, the 24th chapter. Because we made a blood contract with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Right? And when we broke that contract, a blood had to be shed, man. And that's why Yahweh Shai had to die for our sins. And that's why we had to go in slavery, man. Because we broke that contract, so we had to shed our blood, man. Blood had to be shed in regards of breaking the contract of the Lord. So this is Exodus chapter 24 and verse 8. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people... And said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Right? And then they say, uh, bear with me. Let's go to verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the ordinance of the people. And they said, All that the Lord hath said will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. And said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 18. Just the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 18. Where 
whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the